Hi, this is uh, David Keynes. I want to talk to you a little bit about prostate cancer risk stratification. So this may be appropriate if you were just diagnosed with prostate cancer um, and you're trying to understand what the next step is, what treatment options might be. Risk stratification is the first thing to understand. You should also take a look, if you haven't, at my um, explanation of Gleason scoring and staging. So let's talk about prostate cancer risk. We put people in risk buckets because it helps us figure out what to do. There's four categories, very low, low, intermediate, and high. There's out, some people are also adding on a, another category called very high risk. And what are we talking about here? We're talking about risk of spread, risk of being difficult, more difficult to treat, um, risk even of death from prostate cancer. Some prostate cancers in the very low risk group are so wimpy, so to speak, that they never spread and they never cause harm. On the other end, all the way on the right side, uh, these are very risky cancers. Uh, and when we find them, we need to do something about it. So we put people in buckets in various ways. We use the PSA blood test. We use the Gleason score, also called the grade group. And again, if you're not sure what that is, there's another, another video that you should review. We talk about the number of needles that hit cancer spots in the prostate. And your rectal exam findings can also uh, play into this. So just for example, we use the PSA to put people in groups. If the PSA is under 10, you might be in these very low or low risk groups. In the 10 to 20 range, that puts you in the intermediate group. In the high risk, uh, PSAs are over 20. But there are other ways you could move around between these buckets. And the most common reason is the Gleason score. Now, um, I'm gonna focus here on groups. And if you're familiar with this, this basically answers the question, how aggressive does the cancer look under the microscope? We put people in groups one through five. The least aggressive prostate cancers are group one. The most aggressive are group five. Uh, the Gleason score is a little bit more complicated, but it's the same thing. Group one is Gleason three plus three. Group two is three plus four. If the four number is first, that's group three. And Gleason 8, 9, and 10 are groups 4 and 5. And you can see here, this intermediate risk group is so diverse that we break it down into low intermediate and high intermediate. Some people call that favorable intermediate and unfavorable intermediate. And essentially, one of the ways that you can end up in one group or the other is Gleason 3 plus 4, group 2 is low intermediate. 4 plus 3, group 3 is high intermediate. Now, the most important thing here is uh, a couple things. First of all, this might influence whether your doctor orders any scans to check for spread. Now look at this, in the very low and low risk groups, uh, we essentially don't do any imaging. In the low intermediate risk group, uh, well, we'll skip over that for a second. Uh, for high intermediate and high risk, we get bone imaging to look for bone spread and we get imaging in the pelvis near the prostate and your abdomen to look for enlarged lymph nodes. And in the in-between groups, we might get scans in specific circumstances. We have calculators that we enter your data in that we can estimate the risk of lymph node spread. And if it's greater than 10%, or if there's certain PSA cutoffs or rectal exam findings, we might get imaging of your bones abdomen and pelvis in specific circumstances. But so if you're in the very low or low risk group and you're wondering why you didn't get a scan, that's why. Now, this is probably the most important part of this little explanation here. What group you're in impacts whether you need treatment. We're quite certain that people in the high risk and high intermediate risk groups over here on the right have prostate cancer that needs to be treated. And that treatment can decrease the chance of dying from prostate cancer. All the way on the left side here, the other end of the spectrum, 
for very low and low risk prostate cancer, we're pretty sure that those don't need treatment, that we can just observe them. And that's called active surveillance or close monitoring. Now, this middle box is a little bit more challenging. You can see that includes people at the highest part of the low risk group. So that might be people with uh, Gleason 6 or grade group one prostate cancer, but a lot of needles hit it. Or people in the low part of the intermediate risk group, for example, people who may have grade group two or Gleason 3 plus 4, but only a tiny amount. It's sort of an in-between zone where things are less clear. Some of those cancers will behave like the very wimpy ones on the left and might not need treatment. And some of those cancers will behave like the more significant ones on the right and do need treatment. And decision-making can be a lot more complicated in this zone. And we might use things like what we think your life expectancy is and other medical problems and your own preferences to try to help figure out what to do. What I haven't gone over here is another very in-depth topic of what treatments are available for prostate cancer. We're not gonna to touch on that now. And then on the other side, how exactly is active surveillance done? Uh, that will be left for a different video. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for listening.